Hey everyone, we just got done with project number one of Adam Learns. The show is brand new, it just started in the last week, and it focuses on my learning process and how I approach and hopefully overcome problems. Let's dive right into the project itself, which is making a Discord bot. For every project that I do on the show, I wanted to have a document like this so that people could quickly dive in and see what's going on. This particular bot is supposed to handle the monetization requirements of the show itself. Those requirements come from both Twitch and Patreon, and here's where they're all listed. This was just launched on Monday. I wanna highlight some of the perks that are going to be handled by this bot. One is that there are polls, so you can do votes on this, and the votes are according to how much money you've spent, so it's not a real democracy here. If you spend more money, you get more votes. You also get access to the project output, VODs, notes, code, anything else that I might end up doing, and shout outs, so typical Patreon stuff. We just need a way to facilitate it. That means that the bot itself needs to integrate with both Patreon and Twitch to be able to fetch information about each person to figure out what level they subscribed at. There needs to be some interface for handling this, which being a Discord bot, text commands as you might expect. And there were some other requirements here too. I didn't want people paying money and not getting the perks, so we needed to get this done as soon as possible because people have already started subscribing. To that end, I picked a couple of technologies I've been using for the last five years, JavaScript and Node.js, so that that part would go faster. But given that the show is called Adam Learns, it doesn't mean I won't be learning things as I go. In particular, I plan on learning the Discord API. Turns out to be more than that that I ended up learning. I'll cover that soon. Specificity, I didn't want this bot to be a general bot that you roll in your own server that you can adapt with hardly any changes. It was meant for me and we had five episodes in which to do it. So this all comes down to the get it done as soon as possible. Finally, and this is rather unfortunate, there were no tests that got done in the end. I would have liked to have done this, but there wasn't any time. The bot always needs to be online. This goes without saying, if you paid money and I don't happen to be streaming at the time, I think you should still get access to those perks. I wanted to protect pe people's data. That means that you should be able to delete your data. You shouldn't be able to see what other people subscribed at necessarily. And finally, I didn't want monthly payments to maintain this bot myself, which meant I wasn't going to get a digital ocean droplet or pay for cloud service. So for that, here's where I ended up hosting it. It's not actually the piano, it's the thing on the left there, that Raspberry Pi. So I bought one of these and I set it up and it's working great. With any development project that I do, I tend to plan things in three major areas, research, design, and coding. The research that I came up with upfront is what I knew that I didn't know yet. So there are a lot of unknowns that will come up as I go, and I'll still tackle those and I'll still do research, but these were things I knew right up front that I wanted to tackle. One was which database did I wanna use? I wanted something that didn't have a server process or a daemon running, so that meant I couldn't use something like MongoDB or MySQL. I wanted to have just a flat file in the end so that I could back up the database more easily, and I didn't want just JSON blobs or a document store, so I went with SQLite for this. The Patreon API is a web API, and they have a Node.js wrapper for this, and I figured I would just use that. I'll say more about that later. The Discord API, there are many libraries for this, and I did a little bit of research on them, not too much. I found three major ones. There's a Cairo, there was Eris, and there's Discord.js. A Cairo looked like it wasn't really getting updates too much, so I shied away from that. Eris looked like it was getting updates but didn't have a whole lot of features. And so I went with Discord.js in the end because it seemed like a good mix of both. Still seemed stable and was still getting updates and seemed to have a decent amount of features. The Twitch API, there are currently two. There's version five and there's Helix. And I had a member of Twitch staff in my channel at the time and he had said, you should use Helix. So I didn't do much more research, I just went with that. I don't wanna spend a long time focusing on the design because I didn't get to spend a long time focusing on it during the actual episodes. With that said, there were several areas of design. The database is pretty simple. There's a users table where we keep track of perk information, who's subscribed, and we also keep track of polling, the polls, the options, and then the votes for those options. The command dispatcher, we talked earlier about how Discord bots have text commands usually. There needs to be something that will process user input and route it to the correct command, and then something that will let you reload the commands so that you don't need to restart the entire bot to do so. There are the integrations with the extra services themselves, Twitch and Patreon. Discord will apply roles to people so that you know that someone is a subscriber, but you won't know what their subscription level is. So you can't tell that someone spent 10 or 
even if there was a way to do that, I wouldn't want to apply that because I don't want that data being shared necessarily. We need to fetch the information from those services. That's part of the design of this. Then there are polls. We need to be able to create and update them and then facilitate the voting itself, which is done via Discord embeds. I'll show that off later. And then code design, this is anything from what will this function look like to how our files laid out. All right, difficulties. Difficulties are where we learn the most about projects. I could have just titled this learnings in fact. I wanna start by showing you a clip that just sums up the whole experience. Oh wait, oh there it goes. It found the commands, nice. So I found reload and ping. So now when I type ping, it should type pong. Perfect. <laughs> Coming back to specific difficulties, I had really two sections of the overall project. There was integrating with these third-party services, Patreon and Twitch, and there was the polling system. And you can see I have difficulties listed out for half of the project already with the integrations. Let's talk about Patreon. Patreon has a lot of information that it'll share via its API, user data like an email address or a full name, and also payment data. Not necessarily credit cards or anything, but just what level people subscribed at. And I didn't want to share any of that, so I couldn't do this aspect on stream. That's not a real difficulty for most people because we'll usually be working offline, but it's something that I ran into and had to work after hours to do. The second part was OAuth. I didn't have a lot of experience with OAuth. I knew about it at a high level. But at a low level, you get an access token and you get a refresh token. And what you do when you call into an API is you say, here's my access token, and that might have expired, in which case you'll use your refresh token to get a new set of tokens. That library that I mentioned earlier, the Patreon library that Node.js has as a module, it didn't automatically refresh tokens. And so I had to write my own layer of code for this. Let's dive into this a little bit because I like this function that I wrote. There was a request and what this would do is this actually would form the request. So this wasn't a request itself. When you called this, it would get the request and then you would await that and it would call into the service. When there is an authorization error of 401, we'll see if we've retried so far. And if we haven't, we'll refresh our token and then try again. This worked very well and I could then save the new tokens to a file on my hard drive. Talking about Twitch difficulties, there was a completely different set of difficulties. On Discord, you can link your Twitch account. And what this will do, you can see I have this display on profile. If you right click someone's name on Discord and go to their profile, you'll then be able to see, okay, here's their Twitch account. In order for a bot to read that information, you need to have the connections OAuth2 scope. That's not necessarily a problem, but what that means is that I would need to direct users to a website where there are two buttons, connect with Twitch and connect with Discord. And a user would have to click each one of those and then they'd get prompts to authorize it further to make sure that they're okay with these scopes. And I need to host that site somewhere too. If I hosted it on this bot that's sitting over there, that means that people would have my home IP address unless I obscured that somehow. I felt like it wasn't worth the headache, so I went with a different route here. What I did instead was based on a suggestion from someone in chat. What you would do is you would tell the bot you want to link Twitch and it would give you a token. And it would tell you, go, go send this on Twitch to the bot itself. And this would connect and then you'd be authenticated. This caused a bit of confusion in the channel, so I wanted to explain how this works. Like I said, there's that role in Discord where I can tell that you're a Twitch subscriber, but I can't know who you are on Twitch. And because I didn't wanna set up that OAuth page, I couldn't fetch that information from the API myself. So what I would do is I would give you a secret on Discord. And if you can present that same secret to me on Twitch, then I would know this has to be you. There is one thing you might be thinking about now, which is what happens if someone else got this secret here and then they shared that? Well, what that would do is that would give another person access to your perks that you paid for. So you really have no incentive to do that. But let's say you did anyway, and now you wanted to claim your own perks back. There are commands to handle that. You can unlink your Twitch and then you can link it again. There were difficulties with the polls as well. Like I said, I ran into difficulties with basically everything here. One part of it was that Discord embeds were brand new to me. This is what the polls ended up looking like here. And you can see there are reactions at the bottom. What happens is you'll click one of these. It'll tally your vote combined with your voting power, which is based on how much money you had spent. So it might raise this one up by five votes. 
and then the reaction would go away so that people couldn't tell what you voted for. So that keeps voting mostly private. If you were hovering over one of these reactions at just the right time, you would see that. But unless people are collecting this up and then sharing it out, I don't think it's a big deal. The other part of polling that's tough is that there are a lot of database calls here that could have happened. So what I do is I tend to keep most things in memory and only when I feel the need to save to the database will I save. Finally, there's that variable voting power and this was variable in two senses. One is that depending on how much money you paid, you would get a different level of votes. But two is that you could actually subscribe at a higher level or a lower level within the same day or the same month. And that voting power that you had at, let's say six o'clock that day might be different than at seven o'clock. What that means is that you could change your voting level and then you'd see these rise or fall on the fly. I didn't feel the need to do that because most of these polls are going to be for things like, what project do you want to see next? Or what color should this thing be? Something that doesn't exactly matter in real time. So it will tally up the right votes, but it does so at the end of the poll when it closes. The other difficulties that I ran into there is state change that can happen while the bot is offline. I just mentioned how your voting power can change. That can happen while the bot is online. But now imagine that that poll is there and you click one of the reactions and the bot was offline. Let's say my Raspberry Pi shut down or let's say there was an ISP outage. When the bot starts back up, it should tally that vote because you probably won't come back and check to see if it was tallied. So that was a difficulty I ran into when I, I ended up fixing that. At startup, it does some things and it does pull throughout. The major difficulty here was the length of time set out for the project. I did all of this in roughly five days and there was not much downtime <laughs> in that amount of time. I think this project is better suited for something that's maybe two to three weeks. And today it is February 22nd. You can look at the code if you're a supporter of the show. You can look at the code and you can see some of the mistakes I made, some of the things that I had to cut corners on. And maybe by the time you end up watching this video, maybe I've been working on the code for another couple of months and you can see how it eventually evolved. I think that if I were to set out and do this with as much time as I could have, that yeah, roughly three weeks or a month is what I would have planned for. And then the other thing, I had a difficulty. I thought this was funny and wanted to share this. I'm, I'll show you a clip from my stream. Whoa, 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 whoa. My bot just spammed like endlessly Oh, I cannot get these things off of my screen right now. Uh-oh. It just keeps saying unable to find a link token in your message. It's like not stopping this. And it's not even running. What is going on? <clears throat> well, if anyone said anything in chat, I won't be able to see it. Because chat is flying by. Well, I'm going to wait for this to stop. I don't even know how this is. Oh, it's slowing down? No, it's not slowing down. Going up. <laughs> oh no. Don't ban my bot, Twitch. Remember, this is a Discord bot. There isn't too much to demo with it, but still, I'll show you some things here. I'll show you what it's like to make a poll. So this is one of the JSON files that we could use. This has the topic, when it ends, and then the options for the poll. So we drag that into Discord and then type poll create and it will start setting up the poll for us and it adds reactions at the bottom. It's going very slowly because I'm trying to demo this. <laughs> there we go. This is actually running off my own computer right now, not off the Raspberry Pi. So when I vote for something, it tallies my vote and it updates this and I can change my vote to something else and I can clear my vote. One of the things that people were asking about is how do you tell what you voted for? Just click a different button or click even the same button and you'll be able to see what your current vote is by doing that. The other thing I'll show you really fast here is my perk information. So I call perks. This would normally be private message to me, but just for the sake of the demo, I've got it showing here. So it says I get voting access. It says that I get access to Twitch VODs and it tells me other commands that I can use to access those perks. I don't want to spend much time on the improvement section. I mentioned how I did all this in about five days. So clearly there are going to be improvements that I'd like to make. I wrote some of them here. I'm not going to talk about them. The conclusions from all of this, I met the goal. I handled Patreon integration, Twitch integration, and I got polling working and we tried it out today and everything seems to be going okay. Not the greatest, but okay. I learned a ton. 
I learned about the Discord APIs, Patreon APIs, a little bit more about OAuth, a little bit about webhooks, even though I didn't really mention them here. I didn't end up using them too much. And something about the Twitch API too. And then there are a lot of little things along the way, maybe techniques for doing things that aren't worth highlighting. What I want to end with here is I just started this show. I'm trying to make a living off of this. I really hope you guys have liked this content. If you'd like to support the show, I've got the Patreon link in the description below. You will get access to all those things that I mentioned. I'm live streaming all of the episodes on Twitch, which means you can watch the process of development or of whatever topic I might be covering. This show isn't just supposed to be about tech, even though the next week or so will still be focused on tech. I'd like to branch out in other topics. So thank you very much for watching. If you don't feel like supporting monetarily, just share this video out with people or on social media or something. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much.